Hi, welcome to class three of Energy 142. We're going to do a utility bill overview on this class. So what we're going to cover in the utility bill overview is a bunch of information. And all this information is going to be needed for your task one. So we're going to focus just on electricity bills, but the same sort of idea applies for uh, natural gas, water bills, oil bills, any other bills really. Why we're going to focus on electricity is because they're the, they're the hardest. So this is all the information um, I ask for in task one. And some of the information we're going to get from the bills, and that's in red. And some of the information we're going to calculate, and that's in blue. So this portion of the video, I'm just going to show you um, the how to get um, the information from the bills in red. And then I'll show you how to calculate, do the calculations in Excel, uh, which are in blue. So let's go ahead and um, step forward here. So the first thing we're going to look for, and let's go back, is the date start and the date end of the utility bill. And you can see um, in, in page one of this utility bill, and I've made some um, changes so we can't see whose utility bill this is. Um, there's usually a from, oops, let me go back. There's usually a from and to date. So that's from November 4th to December 7th. So that's the date start and date end. So let's go ahead and update our table with that. So there's the date start and date end. So then let's look for the flat rate charges. So remember, flat rate charges are charges that don't vary um, with how much electricity you use. So in this case, um, it's called a customer charge. And you can see there's no calculation after the customer charge. And that's how you know it's a flat rate charge. Sometimes you'll have a flat rate charge in your electric supply down here as well. But um, here, we can see that there's um, no um, there's no calculation, and that's the only flat rate charge we have. Um, and in the supply summary, there are calculations here. So um, it's only the 278.04. And again, we'll update our table. So there's a 278.04. Now let's look for the kilowatt hours used. So um, the kilowatt hours used are come from, again, this, this table. But kilowatt hours are um, just the on-peak and the off-peak kilowatt hours here. So the 246, two, two, 248,678 plus the 177,058 um, kilowatt hours. So it's the on-peak and off-peak kilowatt hours. So that's, if we add them up, we can see we get um, you know about 425,000 kilowatt hours. So again, we'll update this. So there's the kilowatt hours used. Now let's look for the peak kilowatts. This is probably the hardest thing to find on the bill. Um, so if we look at um, the page that just looks um, very overly complicated, this page, um, page two of our bill, we have a bunch of different, um, you know, metrics and ways to um, measure our utility use or um, our utility bill usage. So the there's a bunch of different things here. We have here we have um, all of our meter readings up top. And then we have the on-peak, the mathematical total of on-peak kilowatt demand used, and that's 900. And then if we have from interval pulses, so that's every 15 minutes, the utility sends out an interval pulse of how much we're using, that's 894. So either one of these, I would accept the 900 or the 894. Um, so the big difference, though, we, is, is, that's weird about this, is that there's a ratchet here, because we have the peak summer demand, which is the 1,126 kilowatts. And what we're actually charged for is, again, a percentage of that um, peak billing demand, which is the 1,068 right here. So um, what I would accept is 900 or 894. I do not want, I want what's actually the peak of that month. I do not want the peak summer demand or the total kilowatt billing demand. Um, but that's something to make a note of um, when you're doing your analysis. OK, so we put 900 kilowatts in there, just to make it a little easier. Now let's look for the total energy charges. The total energy charges are charges for kilowatt hours. Remember, kilowatt hours are energy, and kilowatts are power. So we want to find everywhere where there's a calculation on the bill involving kilowatt hours. So we can see there's two up here, and there's one down here. The other thing it might say in the bill, it might just say energy charges. So you have to um, think a little bit about um, the energy charges and and whatnot and what's going on. So we have to add all those up and we get a total of about 32,200. Again, we'll update that. 
Now, power charges. Power charges are for kilowatts. Okay, so kilowatts are power, remember. So um, sometimes there's many, and actually many times, there's more than one charge per kilowatt. But in this case, there's only one charge, which is up here. So each kilowatt's about $3. Multiply again. This is not going to be the same number. This is what you're billed for, but not what you used. So um, that's what you want to put in here. So we, again, update our table with a 3,310. And um, we're done all the red. So the blue, we're going to calculate in Excel. So here is um, an Excel spreadsheet with certain numbers of, um, with all our data put in. And let me make it a little bit bigger so that way it's easier to see. Um, and I'll just zoom in on that. So um, let's go ahead and calculate the number of days in the billing cycle. So it turns out Excel, when it stores dates, if you subtract dates, it gives you, it automatically gives you the number of days. So in this case, it's 33. So I just subtracted B2 from A2. Um, now with BTUs used, if we remember that there's um, 3,412 BTUs per kilowatt hour, we basically take the kilowatt hours used, so equal kilowatt hours used times 3412. Okay, so that's just the, these two are just two sides of the same coin. Same exact thing, kilowatt hours and BTUs, just in different units. Now, the average monthly energy charge, we're just going to look for the energy charges that's in dollars, and then we're going to divide by the total amount of kilowatt hours. So we're going to take the energy charges divided by kilowatt hours. So this should be somewhere, in, and it's going to be different for different buildings, but it should be somewhere in the order of, you know, 1 to 20 cents. Um, if you get anything besides that, you uh, have done some sort of calculation or, or something from your air, um, bill is wrong. So now let's look at the average monthly power charge. That's dollars per kilowatt. So we're going to take the power charges divided by the kilowatt, peak kilowatts. So $3.68. So um, then what I want for the average electric cost per kilowatt hour total, and I made a note of this on your task, is I want the total cost of the bill. So I want... Um, the flat rate charges plus the energy charges plus the total power charges. This will give us an idea of um, sort of the total cost of the bill um, per each kilowatt hour. Um, and sometimes if your um, power charges aren't that much, which they aren't in this case, it's going to be similar to the energy charge. But if your power charges start to be a, a good bit, this may be um, drastically different than your average monthly energy charge. And so you can sort of see something from there. So that's how we do these calculations in Excel. So um, that's about it for um, this, this class. Uh, hopefully you get an idea of how to um, go about doing task one now. You're going to need to do this for all of your um, electricity bills.